Hello, and welcome to Kidding Around, a kid health podcast for everyone who touches the life of a child, with your host, Dr. Candace, a pediatrician whose passion is kids' health. Each episode, Dr. Candace chats with other experts in the field of pediatrics to talk about things you want to know about babies, children, and teens. You can listen to these podcasts whenever you like on her website at drcandicemd.com. That's drcandicemd.com. Click on the podcast tab to listen to it on iTunes and or SoundCloud. You can also follow Dr. Candice on social media, Facebook or Twitter at drcandicemd. Once again, welcome to Kidding Around, and we hope you enjoy today's podcast. at a crossroads you can either say you know what these people are right and I can't do it or I can say these people are right and I can do it but ultimately the decision to follow your dream to chase your dream it lies in you and I had to make that decision at 15 at 16 whether or not I was going to believe in myself so when I come back here it's just a reminder of what I can accomplish when I believe in myself because to think that I would be where I'm at now back then people would be like there's no way but I think it's just a reminder to me that if I actually put my mind to it and I believe in myself, impossible is nothing. Hi, welcome to Kidding Around. I'm Dr. Candace, and thank you so much for listening. Today, my guest is here with me, Mr. Laron Prophet. He is a former NBA player and a former assistant coach for the Orlando Magic, and he'll tell us a little bit more about what he's doing now. He's going to also tell us about his life in the NBA, what he's doing now, his views on fatherhood, and give us some sports health tips for young athletes from a pro's perspective. So thank you so much for coming to Kid Around with me. I really appreciate you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This is my pleasure because I'm hopefully going to learn something today too. Awesome. All right. So let's start off with just telling our audience a little bit about you, uh, childhood, what got you interested in basketball, and tell us whatever you'd like for us to hear. Well, I think uh, the thing for me was my mom had me. She was young. I'm mm-hmm. sure everybody knows this story. Everybody, everyone's got a similar story. Right. My mom was very young when she had me. And we were in a very impoverished neighborhood, mm-hmm. but nobody knew it because everybody was poor. Okay. So it wasn't like you stood out from anybody else. And then my mom, when she turned 23, got married. Okay. And her husband was in the military, so we ended up traveling all around. So now I'm, I go from this all-black neighborhood mm-hmm. where everybody is my cousin or my pretend cousin <laughs> to living in New Mexico where wow. I'm the only black kid in my class. Mm. So for me, the thing I had to learn was, okay, so how do I integrate myself into this new situation? That's right. And the best thing for me was I started going to the basketball court and I'd be out there by myself, just me and the ball. And before you know it, here comes another kid. Mm-hmm. A couple minutes later, here come two more kids. You're playing two on two. Here comes another kid. And before you know it, you know the whole neighborhood right. based off of basketball. So that was really the way basketball became a tool for me. It was really okay. just to meet people and establish friendships. And that, that's often what it is for a lot of people. And then you found that you were good at it. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so you start seeing your, your friends say stuff like, man, you're kind of mm-hmm. good. you know. Uh-huh. And then I turned 10 or 11. And I had a coach in a youth league, okay. and he used to always come pick me up, mm-hmm. and he would make sure that I got to every game. And everybody was like, man, he makes sure LeRon is at every game. That's saying something. Well, part of it was if we scored 30 points in a game, I probably had 25 of them. All so right he was like, now. I got to make sure yeah. he gets to the game. And then right. as I grew older, I started to grow a little bit. And before you knew it, I was in high school, and I was first team all state. And then awesome. I became player of the year in the state. And then I got college scholarships that started coming in, and the next thing you know, I'm playing in college at the University of Maryland. Awesome. Terrapins. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And so that was an opportunity for a great education and at, at a top school. So basketball is a wonderful tool. No, nah, it was because for me, you know, the reality is for a lot of kids that come from where we come from, you know, you don't necessarily look at getting a scholarship uh, educational-wise, mm-hmm. academically. You look at sports. That's what you hear. That's what you see. Right. So for me, it was like, okay, 
how am I going to get into college? Right. My parents don't have the money to pay for it. That's right. My grades don't look great enough for me to get an academic scholarship. And that's probably because I didn't try as hard as I mm -hmm. should have, just being mm -hmm. honest. But basketball, I, I knew right away, this could be something that gets me a that's free education. Right. So as I kind of studied and kind of, I would stay up late every night watching basketball and watching players. And you would hear about such and such graduated with a finance degree or a marketing yeah. degree or a science degree. I said, you know what? Well, I can get two birds with one stone. That's right. I can get to college, play basketball and find a way to get a degree. So it really became like a plan of mine for me to use basketball. That's amazing. That's good. And I, I wish that everybody would look at it that way. Absolutely. Because I think some athletes play and they don't get the academic part. But if you do them together, you're going to be successful. So you did it the right way. Yeah, I think a lot of the kids, everyone thinks they're going to the league. NFL, NBA, mm -hmm. baseball, whatever sport it is. But the reality is if they're going to pay you to get a degree, take it. get a degree. Take it. That's it's right. free. I mean, in a lot of senses, they're giving you this scholarship for you to go to class for free. Right. I said, well, I'm not leaving here with nothing. That's right. You know, I, I walked this campus. I played basketball. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of people money. So this is there my insurance in case I don't make it to the NBA or play professionally. That's a powerful message to our young people. Have that A plan, that B plan, and and keep on playing. You know what you're going there after. You, go. you know, know right. what you're going after. That's right. So on to the NBA years. So everybody has their idea of what that's like. Yeah. Share share with us a little bit, pros and cons. Well, I think the biggest thing you got to adjust to for 90% of us is you go from a situation where you are the best player on your team. Mm -hmm. You walk in the NBA and you might be the seventh best player on your team. Mm -hmm. So it's a culture shock. For the right. first time probably in, yeah for the first <laughs> time probably in your life you are not the guy you're right. not the man everything doesn't come through you everything doesn't run through you so it's an adjustment yeah, for your ego because imagine. you know you you're in an environment now where there are guys who are better than you yeah everybody when, in college was the man yeah so that was the first thing i think the other thing is you know you get that first check mm -hmm. in your eyes they get real oh, yeah. big you know oh, yeah. and you start thinking you can buy everything and so does your family. Mm -hmm. So now Uncle such and such family is calling. In pockets. <laughs> Auntie such and such is calling. Your cousin calling. Right. Everybody's trying to get a piece of the pie. Right. And sometimes because we love our family, it's hard to say no. Mm -hmm. And you start acting as if you're going to have this money forever. And there can be some trouble with that. So those are some of the cons. The pros are just you have accomplished a dream. Yes. Something that you probably, for me, I thought about since I was eight, nine years old. Amazing. You're living a dream. And how many people in their lifetimes can say, I lived that. my dream that I had as a kid Absolutely. and actually get to go through it. And I think the other thing was um, you get to meet some very interesting people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you meet people from exposure. all back, all exposed yeah. to all types of yeah. people, backgrounds. Everyone's story is different. So I think there's so many beautiful things about it. Um, I embraced it all and mm -hmm. I tried to use it all to my advantage. That's awesome. That is so good. So, is there anyone, you mentioned a coach already, that was instrumental in getting you there and teaching you and and, and keeping you going through those maybe middle school, high yeah. school years, but is there anyone or anything, any challenge that you had in your life that uh, you would attribute to your success? My mama kept so me much, in church. Right? She I did? mean, that was number one. My, you know, my mom was just, she was a drill sergeant. They mm -hmm. used to call her the warden. But I think her planting me in church early was big because I think being in church all the time, you, you kind of have a constant theme that there's a bigger power at work. Yes. Don't ever get too full of yourself mm -hmm. because a lot of this stuff could be given to somebody else. That's right. So I think that was one of the huge things for me growing up was just always having that in the back of my mind. Um, I think the other thing for me was I've seen so many people who could have made it mm -hmm. and didn't make it. Hmm. I learn a lot from other people's mistakes. Okay. That's probably one of the, the best qualities I have. Right. I don't necessarily have to go through what you went through to learn from it. Hmm. Listen up, teenagers. Yeah, so <laughs> I see guys from my neighborhood or guys that I grew up with and I'm getting calls or go back home and they're in jail mm -hmm. or they've made mistakes. And I just said to myself, I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to jeopardize my future right. for something that's really small and insignificant. So I think being able to see other people and see the things they went through and experience both positive and negative right. I think I was able to learn from that and try to make my path a little bit smoother right by learning hey maybe don't do that or right. you know this is something that you do need to do so I think being able to kind of assess the situation right that other people's journey and incorporating it into mine I think that was huge for me 
And to be able to do that as a high school kid, I think, was something that you don't see all the time. That's right. But I encourage kids to, you know, look at your peers and see the ones that are on the right road and the ones that are not. And what can you learn from both sides? Absolutely. Need to pick the ones you need to be hanging with and Absolutely. the others, like you said, learn from their learn mistakes. From and then, like you said, you had this powerful mom that you knew she would jack you up at any point. And we're not promoting no, any, any, type of, <laughs> any type of jacking up. But, you know, not literally, but figuratively, no. she guided you. Yeah. And she was in your ear and she was all in the mix keeping you I on path. I think for her, it was just, she was just really a constant reminder that, you know, that may look fun, mm -hmm. but it's going to cost you. You know, you think your friends, you think those yeah. guys are having fun, you think they're cool, you right. think what they're doing, it's not going to last. All and I think because It all has consequences. Yeah. I think she learned that through my father mm -hmm. and some of the people that she grew up with. Mm -hmm. And I think she was just trying to remind me constantly, like, it may look cool, but in the long run, it's not in your benefit. There so you that go. was really the message that she was constantly reinforcing in the house all the time. That's good. That's good stuff. So what are you doing now? So now I work for uh, Jordan Brand mm -hmm. and I am a sports The marketer. Jordan? The Jordan. All right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Jordan. Uh, so I, I do sports marketing. Okay. What that basically means is we have relationships with athletes that mm -hmm. are assigned to our brand all across the board. Okay. Football, basketball, all baseball, sports. boxing, okay. golf. And so I manage the relationships awesome. with these players on behalf of the brand. So whatever we need from them, whatever, you know, shoots and interviews, mm -hmm. commercials, uh, media content we need from them, I'm the one who has to kind of set that up, manage okay. it, schedule it, get them to where they need to be, make sure it's done right, walk them through it. And I also have to kind of manage their families as well in I terms of imagine. what they need, uh, their expectations. Right, so absolutely. on that end. Pretty busy. Yeah, and then on the other <laughs> end, I, Whatever the athlete needs from us, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of apparel, gear, uh, requests, if they need, you know, they feel like they want to be on TV more, interviews more, I have to kind of manage these relationships awesome. to make sure that they feel valued and that they're a priority of the brand. That sounds fun. It is. It's a great opportunity yeah. for me to interact with athletes. It keeps me close to the game. I'm not necessarily playing anymore, but it keeps me close mm -hmm. to the game. And because of my experiences and some of the things that I've been through, it allows me to share with them some yes. advice that they, they maybe teach, yeah. haven't you know experienced yet and mm -hmm. sometimes it's easier to take advice from somebody who you feel understands your story that's right. they've kind of been through it so it gives me an opportunity to do that as well wow that's good and so it's amazing if you look back and i know you do this all the time probably at your trek and how you've made these transitions and that's good. You put, like you're a planner, so your transitions <laughs> are probably already planned out and ordered out, like you said. So how do you juggle all that? So we're going into maybe helping some dad that may be listening to the podcast, that work-life balance of a father who's very busy in a very high-yield field, because I'm sure with managing all these people, dealing with people, it's going to be... Oh, it's never off. Right, difficult. Never off. So how do you make sure you, you're keeping the wife okay, yeah. the kids okay, and, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is prioritizing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, your wife and your family are, hey, mm -hmm. they're at the top no, of the food chain. That's you right. Know, that that's just goes without saying. Your job is important, mm -hmm. but your family comes before everything. Right. I, it's I've also been blessed. I'm in a situation where the people I work for understand that. Right. Um, Michael Jordan understands family is a huge thing, so he kind of gives us the leeway to yeah. make sure our family is straight. I think for me, it's trying to be on the same page as my wife, mm -hmm. understanding where I'm needed, you know, what she needs from me, and mm -hmm. kind of knowing that going throughout the day. But the biggest thing I've learned, I think the best advice I got was, you will not get an A in all three every day. Right, that's true, that's true. You just won't. You just Some try. days you'll be an A as a dad, yeah. and a B as a, as a husband, yeah. and a B in work. Mm -hmm. and some days you'll be an A as a husband, and A as at work, and a C is a dead. But yep. what you want to do is try to be as consistent as you can right. and live up to your word. If you say you're going to be somewhere, be there. Mm -hmm. If you say you're going to do something, do it. So I think the biggest thing is not getting discouraged because right. there's some days you just, you right. got to see in that right. today, Dad. You, you, I'm trying. Yeah, hey, I'm I tried. Trying. I got to see right. today. But I That's think right. trying to, you know, uh, be consistent, right. have a schedule. And the biggest thing for me in my house is making sure that me and my wife are on the same page. That communication. She everything. knows what you're doing. You know everything. what she's doing. And That's I, right. You know, I think communication mm -hmm. is so important. But I think one thing I've learned is we always say communicate. 
but the biggest thing is we have to be speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're Ain't communicating. Today. <laughs> we're communicating, <laughs> but we're not speaking the same language. Right. So right. it's important that I have a real clarity and understanding mm -hmm. of what she's trying to tell me, yeah. and vice versa. That that's so true. Yes. I, I'm thinking of some examples in my head, but I'm gonna move on and keep it going. I'm not gonna get off track. You, because you're saying everything. You're dropping the mic. I don't need to add anything. If you listen to my podcast, I, I do a lot of adding on. But you got it. You got it. So, on to the tips. You know, athletes, like you said, there's so many athletes, young, middle school, high school, that are planning for the league, right? And like you said, the percentage oh, is not on their sure. side, right? Yeah. So, outside of that, in general, you know, talk to the parents, talk to the young athletes, and give them some, you've already given them tons of pearls of wisdom, but give them some advice on playing the game of basketball, what's most important, and then I want to ask you about specialization. What do you feel about that? Well, I think in terms of being an athlete, I think the biggest thing is you have to be committed to your craft. Mm -hmm. There's so many people who want to be in the NBA and want to play in college, but there's only so many spots available. Mm -hmm. So I think the number one thing is you have to make a commitment to your craft. Right. I think after you've done that, then I think there's probably three things I would say. Number one, get your rest. Okay. This whole people got this whole uh, no sleep thing I'm like I, that's, sleep is so yeah, important it's, that's mm -hmm. not smart mm -hmm. don't follow that if somebody's right. telling you that don't listen to that right. eat right what you know all about mm -hmm. I think it's important to fuel your body with the best possible foods right. if you want your body to perform well then you have to feed it right that's right uh, and I think the third part of that is you have to be consistently diligent in your practice habits mm -hmm. every single day you have to be diligent and consistent in the way you approach practice Right. the idea of practice for me is so the game is easier. Okay. I want to approach practice with the intensity that mm -hmm. when I get in the game, it's second nature. It's right. instinctive. I don't have to think that about it. That repetition. It just becomes memory. knee jerk. Yeah. I just yeah. do it up like yeah. breathing. Mm -hmm. I don't got to tell my body to breathe. I was just telling my husband that the other day. My son is starting to play basketball and he doesn't have a sports IQ right now. It's real low. <laughs> and I'm like, that's why I tell you guys to go out and just play together because then it becomes that repetition teaches him what like to do. Dancing. Right now he has no clue. He will get So it. we had that conversation. And yeah. it's funny you say that because this is one thing I tell the parents to leave your kids alone. Ah, see that? Stop trying to coach just shot them. me through the heart. Stop trying to coach them. Stop trying to tell them they oh need to my do God. X and they need to do My husband's like. Yeah, I think. <laughs> now, is there anything wrong with you saying, hey, I noticed this or I noticed that? But I think when parents start to overcoach. I'm so you loud. Got, you got to make a decision. Either I'm going to be your parent mm, or mm -hmm. I'm going to be the coach. I can't be both. I'll take it. Because it, okay. what happens I is. I heard it from Coach Prophet. Yeah, because what Leave happens him is, alone. I've actually had kids come up to me and be like, can you please tell my mom to stop talking Oh, he gets mad on me. Yeah. Mom be quiet. I'm like, rebound. Mom's getting rebound. I, I, I used He's to eight. go to AAU games. And I used to tell my friends, like, I'm so glad I didn't grow up in mm -hmm. this year. Because the parents are yeah. out of control. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what are they? Yeah. How can you tell your son to show restraint and be controlled and yeah. be mature, and you're acting crazy? I don't get crazy. I just coach. Yeah. So I, need so to stop I tell coaching. parents. I tell yeah. parents. I tell one of the biggest things you do: let mm -hmm. your kids develop at their own pace. Because mm -hmm. what happens is, if you start over coaching them, they're not gonna like the game. It's discouraging. It is because yeah. it's like I don't yeah. want to play this because every time I play, mom has something to say, dad has something. Yeah, to say. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. The love of the game will carry them to want to get better and want to grow. And what you need to do is be a support system. Now, if they come to you, you be honest and you tell mm -hmm. them what you see. But I see too many parents who've taken it upon themselves to start coaching. And, tell, yes. and a lot of times... I'm training you for the NBA or NFL. Times, right. the parents are telling them the wrong, wrong stuff. stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. the coach is telling them one thing, but mm -hmm. he's like, but well, my dad told me I need to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's confusing the child. So That's I would right. tell parents, let the coaches handle it. You parent Just support, their support them mm -hmm. because you don't want to drive them away from the game. Well, Dr. Candace learned something today. <laughs> I sure did. I knew that intuitively, but it's I'm so I was a basketball player and I just have this fiery, passionate spirit. So at any game, even if I just showed up and I'm not I haven't watched your team before, I'm gonna be cheering, yeah. you know. But I do I do get that that I should just You're not alone. Let I've him seen go. so go. many parents and it's so hard for me to understand what exactly you're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. because your kid is trying to he's he's playing the game because he loves it mm -hmm. or he wants to be with his friends mm -hmm. he didn't he's not playing the game to be critiqued right this is not the level to critique them that's this right. is when you get to high school in college that's when they'll you be ready for it then yeah because yeah. now the game takes on a more serious approach I, I had a story 
that really kind of simplifies what I'm saying. So Peyton Manning, when mm -hmm. he was in college, was the best player in the country. Right, right. Peyton's family, everyone knows his dad mm -hmm. was a, all, like he was a really, really good quarterback, All-American in college. He was a number two pick in the draft. Mm -hmm. So when Peyton's at Tennessee, the assistant coach says, hey, would your dad come in and watch film with us? Oh. And Peyton's like, man, my dad doesn't really like to get involved. He just okay. likes to be dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we would really love if Archie could come by. You know, right. we think he could really teach us something. And, you know, what better to learn from than your dad? Mm -hmm. Peyton says, okay, well, I'll ask him. He says, dad, they want you to come and watch film. Archie's like, I don't want to no do way. that. I want to be your parent. Mm -hmm. Dad, they really want you to come in. So he says, okay. So Archie comes in, mm -hmm. meets the coach, shakes hands. The coach says, I just wanted to meet you. I wanted to watch film with you and Peyton and see what you think. Archie says, well, look, i tell you the truth. I really don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm only coming because you're asking, but I really would rather just be his dad. Right. Coach says, I understand. Just watch a little film. Put the film on. Ten minutes later, they look over. Archie's asleep. <laughs> Peyton says he was trying to send the coach a message. Right. I want to be his dad. Right. I don't want to be his coach. Because if I end up being his coach, I'll be a very poor dad. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think parents oh, have done. Oh, man, before. that was good. Yes. That's good. He that's one of those first Oprah aha movements. <laughs> right, right, right. All right. That was good. So, oh, specialization. Um, so there's a lot of parents. It's kind of what you just what you were talking about. There's a lot of parents who I play basketball. He's gonna play basketball. They play basketball. I pick basketball for you, and then they just make the kid play basketball all year round, or it's baseball, or it's football. And we know in in the medical world that sort of specialization can cause more injuries. You don't get to work other muscles and other things, and it creates burnout. Yeah. That's what we believe. What's your opinion on that? I think let the kids play whatever they want. Whatever they want to play, bounce around. The only seasons. rule. This the only two rules is one: if you sign up for it, you gotta play it out. Okay. There's no quitting. All right. If you sign up, you gotta play it out. Number mm -hmm. two, um, if you really aren't passionate about it, tell us before so we don't spend our money on it. Okay. That, that, that's the only mm -hmm. thing. Be honest enough. Say, you know, I really like soccer, but I don't really, I don't really, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. Then just tell us that. But I think let your kids play a bunch of different sports okay. if that's what they wanted to. I think one, it helps them develop other motor skills. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some sports actually help you in other sports. Mm -hmm. I played soccer a lot Absolutely. when I was younger, and it actually helped me basketball wise because of the high and eye coordination and foot right. quickness. Right. So I think it's important to let your kids play different sports. And I think parents have to stop uh, defining what success is for their kids mm -hmm. in a certain sport. Let right. the kid define his own level of success, and I think he'll go a lot further that way than right. placing your own expectations right. on him. Right. That's just my own personal opinion. So medicine and professionals are great, right? <laughs> I, I like that. So we're going to end. We're almost done. And we're going to end. I noticed that when I corresponded with you, you have a lot of quotes. Yeah, quotes. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah. Cool. So there was one, don't quit, suffer now, and live the rest of your life as a champion. Can you break that down for us? So I'm a huge Muhammad Ali fan. Like ah. huge Muhammad Ali fan. I have every book that's been written on Ali. Mm -hmm. um, I watch every documentary that comes out about him. And I'm just, I'm amazed at not the boxing, mm -hmm. but the fact that this is a person who was willing to live out his convictions mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. He was willing to give up his sport for yep. his beliefs. And we have a lot of athletes today. Oh, I'm so glad you said yeah, that. Yeah, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not mm -hmm. criticizing anybody, mm -hmm. but it just amazes me that this man was able to do that when he was the best in the world. Right, right. And that was one of his quotes, and mm -hmm. it really stuck with me because it's really true in life mm -hmm. that we will go through some suffering, you will go through some tough times. Right. But if you hang in there, you will be a champion. That's and right. that quote has always just stuck with me when things get rough for me. Right. When I feel like I'm going through a rough patch or things aren't lining up for me. Mm -hmm. I, I came up with my own version and said, suffer now, profit later. Ah. You know, because my last name Brandon is Profit. That name. Yeah, Brandon <laughs> that. So it was just something that yeah. really means something to me. It kind of gives me a reminder when I'm going through something that if you get through this, right. on the other side, you'll be a champion. So. Yeah. We have a couple of athletes nowadays that are doing that, standing up for what they believe and maybe future Muhammad Ali's for some of our young yeah, kids Colin now. Kaepernick yeah, is one. yeah. He's definitely, he's, you know, he's definitely raising the bar. And right. I salute that brother for what Absolutely. he's doing. Absolutely. And I think yeah. more athletes, you know, have to be willing to stand up for yeah. what they believe because, you know, ultimately what you remember mm -hmm. for is who you affected. Yes. Muhammad Ali is not the greatest because of boxing, mm -hmm. but it's because of who he was as a person. Absolutely. And I just think that's what makes him so significant uh, in sports and life for, for a lot of us. 
Wow. Such pearls of wisdom. Who knew? <laughs> it's like you're already an old granddaddy. Uh, right? Right? <laughs> pearls of wisdom for yeah. dads, for our youngsters. Well, they're all in the back of your head. Uh, for our young athletes, just, just wonderful information. I really appreciate you. No, I, appreciate I mean, you. I've got goosebumps. I didn't know it was going to be this good. <laughs> all right? So thank you so much. No, I really that. appreciate it. Love what thank, you're doing. Too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And thank you all for listening, and we'll talk soon. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast and learned something today that will help you keep your kids happy and healthy. Let Dr. Candice know by subscribing to her podcast on her website at drcandicemd.com. Feel free to leave her any comments and or questions. You never know who may be on the next show. If you have a direct question, you can also email her at info at drcandicemd.com. That's info at drcandicemd.com. Thanks for listening. And Dr. Candace will kid around with you soon.